Hi, welcome to another tutorial in my series on projectiles. And in this video, what we're going to look at is where we have a particle being projected horizontally from a height. And to do this, I've sketched basically this question up here. We'll just go through it. We've got a tennis player hits a ball horizontally then at a height of 1.6 meters above horizontal ground. And the ball lands 10 meters away. And we've got to find the speed that the ball left the racket. And so in my sketch here, I've said that that initial speed, that initial horizontal speed was u meters per second. And I've marked in the acceleration due to gravity, g, which we're going to take as 9.8 meters per second per second. It acts vertically downwards. Now in problems like this, we normally take our initial point of projection, which we'll call O here, and we split the initial velocity into two components, one horizontally and one vertically. But in questions like this, the initial vertical component is zero because it just is acting horizontally. It's not inclined at an angle to the horizontal. Now, if we're to get u, what we need to do is get u from horizontal motion. But do you remember, if you're looking at horizontal motion, if we just put it over here, let's just say for the horizontal motion, because there is no acceleration in the horizontal sense, we can use the equation s equals ut. Because the acceleration is zero, if we had s equals ut plus a half at squared, that last term would go to zero. So you're just left with s equals ut. Essentially, distance equals speed times time. We know s it's going to be 10. We want u, but we don't know t. So we've got to get t before we can actually work out what u is. And to do that, we consider the vertical motion. And when we consider the vertical motion, we need to work with our SUVAT equations, the equations for constant acceleration. Remember, if we have s, u, v, a and T. We need to put a positive sense and if we're projecting horizontally it's a good idea to let the positive sense be downwards. So I'm going to set positive downwards. So what is S? S is displacement and what is that displacement over this period of time, well in the vertical sense it's plus 1.6, so 1.6 meters there. The initial downward velocity, well it's zero at the start. There's no component of u downwards, so that would be zero. As for the final velocity, when it comes down here, we don't know that. Acceleration is downwards, it's positive then, 9.8 meters per second per second. And t, well that's what we're trying to find. Let's call it big T, the time of flight. So we've got here t equals big T. So what equation would we use then for something like this? Well it's got to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. And if we put our values in for the displacement s, we've got 1.6 then equals u times t. Well, that's going to be 0 times big T here, so that's going to just go out to 0. So we'll leave that out. And then we've got half of the acceleration, 9.8, times t squared. Well, t is big T here, big T squared. So half of 9.8 is 4.9 and if we rearrange this for t squared we get t squared equals 1.6 divided by 4.9. And if we carry on and take the square root of this we find that it follows that t equals 
sevenths, okay? T equals four sevenths if we take the square root of that value. Seconds. Now, when it comes to the horizontal motion, then we've got S equals UT. We know that S is 10. U we're trying to find, this U here, and T we now know is four sevenths of a second. So using S equals UT, we therefore have that 10 equals U times four sevenths. We can multiply both sides by 7 and get 70 equals 4u. And then divide both sides by 4 and you've got u equals 70 over 4. Or 17 and a half meters per second. And there's your initial speed. Your initial horizontal speed then, 17 and a half meters per second. So all you've got to remember then, with horizontal projection initially, there is no vertical component of velocity. It is essentially zero. And hopefully you should be able to see your way through these problems.